Hey guys, Lancey here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining me and looking at some more MTG stocks and the stock market as well. Please like and subscribe. It's just a way to get this video out. There's not many people watching anymore, but if anyone seems to be interested, just like and subscribe and it'll at least make sure that more people come along. Anyways, what has been happening? Okay, so let's start off with some of the more less interesting stuff. Um, the revised edition dual lands. Now, why do I say less inter interesting? Because they're not driving the market. But we'll check the price action anyways. So Bayou, looks like it's dropping down a bit more, but let's have a look at what we can get from PCG Player. Uh, flatline for the last couple of weeks, as you can see. A near mint is going to send you back $431. Still feels on the higher end, but once again, you know, you, you look back at the previous videos, you're going to see that they've been quite stable for a while. I've got a dark mode, but that should be fine. Uh, moving over to Savannah, once again, stabili stabilizing, dropping down a bit. Um, as far as price action, nothing too crazy. Morally played, no, we don't want that. A near mid 349. Plateau, actually spiking up pretty aggressively and as far as MPG stocks go. And TCG player confirms that, yes, it has been moving aggressively up. Uh, Lightly played is going to set you back 351. That is actually quite high for Plateau. Moving over to Scrubland. So Scrubland, you're going to be able to find uh, not really much movement over the last couple of days. Not much in stock at all. I mean, these numbers are pretty high, but as far as listings go, it's not many, is there? Lightly played for $371. Very interesting. Tiger, once again, flatlining, nothing too crazy. You're going to be able to get one for $396, lightly played. Hmm. Moderately played looks very cheap compared to the lightly played. Almost $100. $70. That's an insane difference in price. Mori played will win this one quite easily. Tropical Island. Uh, Tropical Island, it is... Uh, that's, I wouldn't even call that a bit of a uptick. It's pretty pretty cheap right now. You can get a lightly played Tropical Island for $433. Still on the higher end of 2021, uh, 2020 to 2021. Not the February peak of 2021 when everything went crazy. I assume that was follow up to the new stimulus and they have not announced any other stimulus as far as I can tell. You guys can let me know in the comments if the US has announced any direct payments to people. Don't think so. Tundra, Tundra is well, actually still kind of expensive for a 412 um, uh, heavy heavy play 412 but the price action on TGG looks like it's actually on the lower end. Mori played 445, lightly played 539. Still Still hanging in there. All of these prices are still quite a bit higher than 2020. Almost double for a lot of these things. Um, moving over to uh, what is it? Underground Sea. Underground Sea, one of the more expensive ones. A massive drop for that one. Almost $20. What do we have for moderately played? $584. Not bad. Lightly played $610. We're getting to more reasonable prices. And Volcanic Island, the last one for this list. TCG player is coming up with $674 for a heavy play, a bit of a dump in the last couple of weeks straight down, but you're not going to find a lightly played $796.98 still on the higher end. The complete revised market. Now, this is actually really good to see because this is all a revised, the most liquid of all cards, and you can see the spikes of everything that happened in 2020. 2021 and then the slow drop off as people just sell into 2023 and right now we're sitting at $5,795 to buy an entire collection of revised edition with obviously dual lands having most of the value and you can see that it's a bit of a mix and match you got underground sea and tundra moving up by $12 and so on you got tropical island and wheel of fortune moving down by a certain amount so between the two of them it's actually quite even nothing too crazy a negative $5 change Pretty impressive. Okay, moving over to standard. Do I need to focus on standard? I don't think so. These prices are all completely out of control based on a lot of things and I'm not really too much into standard. So we'll move straight over to modern. The dark still forward moving up 15% and I set at $56.99. Mind break trap 13% gain to now set at $60.42. Malaria, malaria, Swalok, 
outcast. I'm not 100% sure how to even say her name. But I have four copies of her and she is now sitting at almost $10 with a 77% gain because of all the poison counter shenanigans that have come out from the new set. She will, in a green deck, literally cancel out poison counters. If you play as a commander, you can cancel out a poison deck very easily. Ragavan. 4% uh, gain, nothing too impressive. Imps, Mischief, 11% gain, tenacity at $29.82. Elish Norn, Grand, Cenobite, 10% gain, tenacity at $32. How is that possible? She's been printed like four times now. Mia, Reservoir, 131% gain, tenacity at $4.90. War Elemental, I got two very beaten up copies of this. I don't know why it's moving up, but it's 223% gain, tenacity at $3.97. And 97 cents, 7% uh, gain for... Credit Hoof Behemoth and Quest of Pure Flames, 278% to Nasir at $2.99. Biggest drop, counterbalance, 25% drop, actually quite impressive of a drop, $34.91. Grinding Station, 15% drop to Nasir at $35.86. Pretty crazy for a uncommon card. 17% drop to Mia Matrix. Now remember, this one had like a 1,400% increase last, uh, last week. So now it's pulling back and it'll probably pull back more because... Now, I mean, these are rares and so on, but like it's just 1,400%, it's just stupid. So most likely the person that bought it out is selling it back in. $19.98, 24% gain for, 24% uh, loss for Mia Turbine, uh, $11.84, and Hollow Fountain is 10% down, $31.20. Moving over to Pioneer, Warren Clerks, now anything over 10%. Gishard, Sun's Avatar, 10% gain to NASA to $19.54. Bates Unraveler, 51% gain to Nasset at $4.99. Everything is really below 10%, which is kind of crazy. Why? Uh, biggest drops, actually, also on the other side, nothing too crazy. You got Lyra, Dawnbringer, 12% drop, now to sit at $7.24. And outside of that, that is actually it. So nothing too crazy on that side either. So how long have we been talking about? Seven. Uh, seven minutes. Okay, that's fine. So what was I saying? Um, I think last week I was saying all about the bouncing of the top of the highs, the fact that we had a breakout from the downward channel that the S&P 500 had been in since 2022. And now you can actually see we've got a bounce. We've got a bounce. Now, what am I waiting for to get into this market? Sadly, there is still two more things that I need to get from the market, or at least from time, for me to then get into the market aggressively or with some confidence. Now, what do I need? I need the Federal Reserve to come out and sound very chicken, uh, dovish. I need, it, I need them to come out and say 25 basis points and we are going to stop in the next meeting because we think we've now beaten inflation and then I am all in on all the markets I will probably just stick with stocks instead of having to worry about buying a house or anything. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally in for the markets. If you've got enough money to buy a house, if the Federal Reserve comes out and says they don't think that they need to fight inflation aggressively, I'd recommend getting your cash back to work and limiting the amount of savings you have because we are going to get spikes in a lot of asset classes because that's literally what the entire market is waiting for, is the Federal Reserve to calm down. Now, why is it so easy for the Federal Reserve to come out and say something and the market to go up? Because there's a, the amount of liquidity in the market will keep inflation very high. Um, lots of companies, instead of producing more, are cutting back and to fight the cost pressures, which means it's actually going to make inflation worse. So unless we get a recession, most companies are going to just cut workers and produce less at a higher cost because they know that they can do that. So it's actually quite important that the Federal Reserve either creates a recession so that people literally can't afford to buy the stuff and the companies still have to continue hiring workers with low wages or lower wages because they just don't need to increase wages because cost of everything else is going down and there's so many workers around. But right now we have the opposite. We have a shortage of workers and I will be demanding a much higher pay if the Federal Reserve comes out and says that they don't want to fight inflation too aggressively. Another thing is once Google, Apple and 
what is it? Google, Apple, there's another company, Amazon maybe, uh, come out with their earnings report on Thursday this week. So Wednesday and Thursday is the federal meeting. Thursday afternoon is going to be the three big companies, especially Apple, which literally controls that entire market by itself. Once that comes out, then we'll know if the market's safe to get in. But how confident do I feel that the market is actually pretty good, good place right now? Uh, pretty confident. Um, at this point right now, the market is in a good place. It's done the bounce. It's done the things that I expect it to do. And I got to say, like, it's weird. It's kind of weird when it plays out exactly the way I was thinking. I mean, I was a bit early to the party. I think I put the wiggly lines over here. I've since deleted those lines, I think. But anyway, um, yeah, so now it looks like we're getting what is expected. We could go to 40 uh what kind of gain is that anyway it's probably not that impressive from where it is right now but we could go to another three percent gain by the end of this uh next uh, end of this month and easily another ten percent by the end of this year now i know from the bottom of what we already have a lot of people got out probably are here i mean i myself got out around about here-ish like right here i think is when i got out and i just wanted to see what was going to happen here so you know if you get out around about here you're not missing much like you know two percent that's that's nothing what you don't want to do is you don't want to miss the entire rally up and then you don't want to then get in here because you're terrifying because then you've got much more chances of losing but right now bounce well and now we're just doing the play around here uh if we look at everything else it's actually kind of crazy what's happening so you got the a um australian and usd guess what doing the same thing it's on the top of the range how crazy is this i drew this line ages ago and guess what it's bouncing off the top of that range again now if the federal reserve comes out and is very hawkish and all that they might push the market down but it's still got a lot of momentum behind it so there's a lot of support underneath the market there's a chance that they're going to have to be super aggressive for it to break through all of these and whatever they're going to say like if they go by 50 basis points when the market's expecting 98 percent for it to be a 25 that might do it and there are a couple of other things that might do it but it's pretty crazy and rba for the australian government they're going to increase it by 0.25 as well i'm 100 sure inflation in australia is actually really bad right now um oil oil is a weird one i don't really know what's going on with the oil um it is bullish on the rsi but at the same time it looks so weak on the macd and even on the uh graph oil oil is a weird one um apple hitting its day head on the 200 day moving average as you can see um very clear is it topping out it's got a little bit left to go if it is topping out then the only reason they'll do it is because the earnings report is absolutely terrible if you own any apple i would recommend getting out before earnings um it's just one of those things you just don't want to bet on what the market's going to do the market always buys rumors sells the facts um xjo so another one that is very interesting i drew these lines a while back today was a bit of a pump up and then it dumped all the way back to the line so a lot of things are waiting for these confirmations now once again it's better to be safe than sorry i am out of um australian stocks as well uh silver uh, silver is so annoying it's just yeah, it's, it's really annoying, all this resistance. Like, if, if it drops from here, I'll be very disappointed. Very disappointed. That's a 70% drop, and I probably should have just sold my silver. Copper, same thing. It's hitting resistance. I, the thing is, what I'm really annoyed about this market is I'm just disappointed by how the market is behaving. Kind of like a spoiled child that really doesn't know what they want but is ready to throw a tantrum at anything that they perceive as a slight to them. Um, it's a really weird market. And truthfully, that's the reason why I'm so skittish, which is the reason why I'm using technicals instead of fundamentals to do any of this trading. Uh, the only time I care about fundamentals is when I'm out of the market. When I'm in the market, I look at technicals. When I'm out of the market, I'm looking at fundamentals because I know what the big fundamental moving things are. Apple's earnings is one, the Federal Reserve talking is another one, and anything to do with war escalation is another one if you're into defense and tech stocks, especially defense actually. 
I'm talking about like BAE Systems and all those companies, or Lockheed Martin and Raytheon and all that. Um, okay, let's have a look. We'll finish this off with a Canadian, uh, oh, where is it? Actually, Lumber's a good one as well. So well, what's Lumber doing? Lumber's about to hit its head on the 200-day moving average. I'm expecting to see a spike to the 200-day moving average and then flatlining, but it is very, very overreaching at this point. Far, far above its um, RSI. Well, that's annoying. Um, I had a reminder that went on at the exact same time. Okay, well, I'll probably have to cut this off pretty soon, but let's finish this off with um, AUD Can uh, Canada. So AUD looks like it's about to lose some of its strength. It's below the nine day moving. Yeah, it's below the nine day and it's losing momentum on the RSI and it's probably gonna get a um, lower low. That's interesting because that counteracts some of the stuff that I was saying before, which sounded so bullish. If the world is doing better and inflation is gonna go up, then Australia is going to have the most amount of benefit from it because it uses a lot of exports. It, it, it sells a lot of things to the rest of the world, which is good when inflation is high because then commodity prices are high. But for some reason, Australia and Canada, they look like they're fighting each other. What about USD and Canadian? Uh, US dollar is looking weak to Canadian dollar, but the 200 day moving average is coming up below it. So that's interesting as well. Actually, let's have a look at the USD, UXY, USD. Where is it? Mm, no, I don't have it. Uh, let's have a look at the VIX. So the VIX, VIX is showing strength, which is unusual. Actually, no, it's not unusual. We're about to go into some two very volatile days, so it's just protection. So DXY, DXY is below everything. Is it hitting support? Yeah, it's hitting support, but it is still so weak. It is outside of this little downward triangle I've drawn. Uh, not too sure what I was doing with that, but I guess that's outside of it. Let's see if it actually does anything. US 10 year, um, still pretty weak. Is it gonna do anything fancy? Probably only if we get a report that says anything about it. Currently, there is no report that makes the US 10 year want to spike up. Maybe if copper goes insane, the US 10 year following it might follow it because it thinks of it as an inflation marker and that means that the bond rates have to go up. Anyone holding bonds might be annoyed by that. But we'll have to see. Anyways, guys, I'm probably going to cut this video anyways. I had to go. But like and subscribe and I'll try to do these once a week because this is probably a bit more detailed. It covers a lot more things and more importantly, it's one of those things where it's not, it's not advice of any kind. It's all entertainment, obviously, but it's just one of those things where it's really important to remember what it is that you're expecting to see when you get signals like this in the real world and how it's going to impact collectible cards, especially the ones that we expect to be inflation protection cards like reserve list. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you guys next time.